Hello, Mr. Sherman here, and I'm part of the Modern Learning Resource Team at the Peel District School Board. And today we're going to be looking at the wide walls of Google Slides and how we can utilize this powerful piece of software to do some um, functionality that it's not typically associated with. Today we're going to look at how to create infographics. Infographics are great ways of taking data and presenting it in a very visual format in order to convey a meaning um, or compel people to action around something. And very, very popular with modern learners these days. Great way to take in information, uh, kind of like reading through a story in a visual literacy format rather than a traditional text format. Very engaging, uh, very graphically rich if you'd like it to be, and a powerful way to get your point across. So we're going to look at how to set this up within, and that way. Hopefully, you'll be able to create this uh, on your own. So first thing to do would be to go to File and go to Page Setup. And the reason we're doing this is just to make sure that when we're editing the slides uh, panel here, we're going to be editing it in a form that is good in relation to the type of medium you'd like to present it in. So if we're going to be doing it in something that's very similar to um, sort of something you'd share on social media or with a photograph, we'd want to set it up like that. If you'd like to print it, you're going to set it up like uh, the standard printing size that you have access to, like eight and a half by 11, uh, just so that while we are editing it, we don't save that part to last. Because you, you know, the, the most awful thing is setting something up, getting all the information in there, and then finding out that you have to crop out, you know, one fifth of your page just because the size might happen to be wrong. So we're going to make sure that's set up first. Next, what I usually talk to about people I'm working with in, in regards to this is picking shapes that match the theme and shapes that also are easy to type information into. Because we're going to want to make these, these shapes uh, filled with great information. And we want to make sure that although some of the shapes that are available are very interesting, um, very complex arrows and things like this, like the quad arrow or the left right up arrow, very difficult to type into information into. So they quickly become something uh, that is is very complex, but you can't get a lot of information into. So people make them larger and larger, and then it starts to take away from your graphic itself. So something like the five point star might be good as a small graphic to highlight something, but in terms of typing information in, it might be very difficult. So I picked a few different shapes here. Uh, representing sort of a modern theme, global issues, things like that. If you're looking at a more historical infographic, you might want to revise the shapes you're using to meet the aesthetic of that time period uh, so you can theme it in that fashion. But setting it up with a nice title bar here, some room to give a subheading, a small graphic to represent your theme might be a good idea. And I'm just going to change the view so we can see the rest of what I have on the screen here. And then just taking in sort of having one where you would put text into and then one beside it where we could have a photograph, for example, um, choosing to use sort of these longer rectangular arrows might be a good idea because you could put some information in there with a graphic right beside it, but highlight that obviously. Um, being very aware of sort of the layout of your page, you wanna give people a little bit of symmetry. Um, they, I mean, people really gravitate towards that and they appreciate that aesthetic. So just moving in some other facts. Generally, what I like to do as well is, you know, sort of have this call to action down here with a little lightning bolt, help energize people to uh, to take action or, or to pursue those next steps. And infographics, since they are built around data, what it might a great way to augment the infographic, not only with with maybe some some text facts and some images and things like that, is to actually put in some graphical data. So by using the Google Sheets tool and creating tables in there with facts and details, if you highlight those, it really is quite easy to create to to organize that data in a different type of chart. And there are many, many charts you can you can choose from. And here in this this one right here, I, I just represent some global impact, some general data, but I've been able to put that in there. Here's a timeline as well that I was able to create using some Google Sheets data. And the nice thing is because we're working in the Google Suite, as long as, as I don't delete that sheet, 
whenever I adjust that data in the sheet to reflect you know, ongoing studies, that's gonna reflect in these charts. So it's real time. So once I'm, I'm done putting it all together, and I have some information in there, it does start to get quite rich with different things to look at, different points that are highlighted, different graphs that are that are helping the reader to understand my data, and finally something that compels people to take action. So I hope this tutorial on how to create an infographic was helpful. Definitely a powerful way to use Google Slides and a great way to engage modern learners in, in sharing their understanding about their discoveries. Thanks for listening.